Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a satisfactory lunch. Next on the agenda, I will introduce Dave Sellers, a member of Leeds Astronomical Society, and he's going to give us a, a glimpse at the heritage of Leeds Astronomical Society. And uh, then uh, Rod will be uh, bringing the story more up to date. And uh, then after another, yet another. And then, and then, we've, got, uh, then we've got Richard McKim uh, talking about Mars dust storms. So, Dave. Thank you very much. Um, the one, just before I start, actually, you may be interested to know that the, uh, the gentleman on the uh, right of the picture, we think, is David Booth, who was the first director of the meteor section of the BAA uh, in the uh, 1890s. There was an astronomical society in Leeds in 1825, but uh, that was very short-lived and disappeared without a trace. And it wasn't until 1859 that the society was uh, re-established. It was inspired probably by uh, the uh, recent appearance in 1858 of Donati's Comet, the most brilliant comet of uh, the 19th century, an annual solar eclipse which was viewed by hundreds and hundreds of people in Leeds, astronomy coming into the, some uh, national examination, uh, uh, examinations for the first time in uh, that year or the subsequent year. And it brought together an astronomical society, remarkably, at the instigation of a 14-year-old boy, William Trant, whom we'll see a, a, a later photograph of uh, shortly. But the most remarkable thing about this astronomical society is that it wasn't like any other. Just imagine what you think of as the typical composition of an astronomical society. It's not at all like uh, Leeds was then. Out of a total subscription-paying membership of 47, four years after its foundation, there were two MPs, one future mayor of the city, one fellow of the Royal Society, and one person who was about to become a fellow of the Royal Society, two lords, one of whom was a serving cabinet minister in the government, and one a former government minister, several prominent industrialists and leading medical men, etc. They were all men, incidentally, at that stage. Not the typical uh, secure foundation, perhaps, for an observing society, and so perhaps that's one of the reasons why several years later that society too collapsed. And it wasn't until uh, uh, 1892 when the society that we know now was refounded on more secure foundations. I'm not intending to give you a, a detailed chronological history of the society, but just a glimpse at the rich archives of the society, which we're very pleased to still have uh, with us, uh, because it is actually a fascinating glimpse of, of, of social history in uh, the locality, as well as uh, something about astronomy. And the centerpiece of uh, those archives that we've still got uh, is surely this scrapbook. It's four inches thick, if you want to see the scale of it, and about 18 inches uh, high. And uh, it's, uh, most of what I'm going to show you today is from that book. Even on the opening page of that book, it says that... Uh, it contains not only the records of the society uh, that was re-established in 1892, with the same secretary, incidentally, that it had uh, previously, um, but also that it's got some of the earliest records of the former society in it. And at the foot of the uh, opening page, there's this earnest plea from that person who was both the treasurer in 1863 and the secretary in the re-founding society, uh, W.D. Barber, should the Leeds Astronomical Society cease to exist, it's earnestly requested that this volume, the scrapbook, a record of its transactions, be deposited without delay in the Leeds Public uh, Free Library for future reference. And I'll explain later how, how we've gone about honouring that obligation. And uh, some of the earliest records in that scrapbook are here, for example, uh, uh, an advert for uh, courses, classes being run by the Society in 1861 at its observatory in uh, Love Lane. There's a, a prospectus for the Society, and perhaps you can read some of the names of the Honorary President uh, George Airy, the Astronomer Royal, Lord Rottersley, which says he's one of the patrons, was the President of the Royal Society, John Herschel, the next person in the list, uh, obviously probably the most famous astronomer, uh, as far as the public were concerned, at the time in the UK, 
And further down the list, the president of the Leeds Astronomical Society, whose picture is here, William Clayton, a local prominent uh, surgeon. But also in, the, in that scrapbook, there is a fascinating collection of letters from some of the most famous people involved in astronomy at the time. You can see on the left at the top there, from the Lowell Observatory, a detailed letter from Percival Lowell, uh, advising members, as it happens, how to do observations of Mercury and how to observe uh, Venus at that uh, time. Down below that, there's a letter that we've got in the archives from George Airy, the Astronomer Royal, written from the uh, Royal Observatory at Greenwich, agreeing to become a patron of the Society. We can't find any record of where he agreed to become the president, but that's how his name appeared on the uh, documentation. In the middle at the bottom, a letter from Fra Sir Frank Dyson, a later Astronomer Royal. In the middle, uh, from, from uh, John Herschel, uh, not um, only agreeing to be uh, uh, a patron of the Society, but uh, 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 explaining how uh, the uh, Society should uh, publish uh, a lecture that uh, he uh, delivered to the society remotely uh, about uh, the metric system, essentially. And then there's a letter from uh, Herbert Hall Turner, the civilian professor of astronomy at Oxford. The picture uh, letter heading on the uh, right there is from the observatory at Juvisy, south of Paris, of Camille Flammarion. He's the signatory to the uh, letter. One of the most popular uh, popularizers of uh, astronomy in the uh, uh, early part of the 20th century, James Jeans, there's a letter from uh, there as well, and so on. Loads of uh, letters from prominent uh, individuals. Uh, but another nice feature of the scrapbook is the photographs it gives of the early members of the society, some of them with their uh, instruments. So you can see here somebody with a Herschelian uh, reflector, and uh, most of them are, uh, are photographed proudly displaying their uh, instruments for uh, posterity. Here is a picture in the scrapbook of William Trant, who was that 14-year-old schoolboy who founded the Society in 1859. But when it was refounded in 1892, he quickly applied to uh, rejoin. But by then, he was living in Canada and had travelled all over the world as a journalist, uh, in, engaged in intrepid adventures, even barely escaping with his life during the Paris Commune of uh, 1871. Uh, here, there's a photograph of uh, Florence Taylor, who was the first woman member of the society, because when it was refounded in 1892, it made a special point of inviting women uh, to be members, full members, in their own right. And Florence Taylor was the uh, very first one to join, and she was an active member. Uh, she gave lectures on, uh, uh, she particularly liked giving lectures about women in, who'd uh, made a contribution to astronomy, such as Caroline Herschel and Mary Somerville, and she was a campaigner for the emancipation of women as well. I found out that later on she emigrated to the United States and became a, a pastor uh, in Sacramento and was the first woman to officiate at a marriage ceremony in uh, Sacramento. Each of these uh, early members had a, a story behind them, but we've got all the minute books from uh, 1898 to 1967, and you can see here one from uh, 1909. I'm not sure how easy it is for you to read, but if you are able to read it, you'll notice that the majority of the committee at, uh, in 1909 were women uh, members. Um, the, in fact, you can see uh, one, the person who's the... Uh, uh, Secretary, I think, at that stage is uh, uh, Lucy Whitmill, who later uh, wrote a famous poem in the First World War. But she was the wife of uh, Charles Whitmill, who was a prominent secretary of the society and a vice president of the BAA at one stage as well. But quite a lot of fascinating individuals. There's a, a Dr. Pocklington uh, here that you can see just beneath the list of uh, names. He was... Uh, uh, a member of the society. I think he was a secretary at one stage, but he was just a modest school teacher at the high school in Leeds, teacher of uh, physics. He professed to only be interested in his spare time in Chinese and music, but he uh, was a, a great contributor to prime number theory. And uh, there's one of the minutes uh, in uh, uh, around about this time where the committee congratulated him on being uh, uh, elected to a fellowship of the Royal Society. So there's some quite uh, impressive individuals in the society at the time. 
We're pleased to have still all the journals and transactions that that society issued between 1893 and 1992, which nearly bankrupted the society. Eventually, they had to ask the wealthier members to uh, pay double subscriptions in order to uh, be able to afford to continue publishing this journal, which they were very proud of as a scholarly journal, more, more so than the newsletters that tend to be published by societies these days. But we have got... Uh, all the backlog of newsletters from 1962 to uh, 1972, the society was issuing uh, these occasional circulars, but in that 72, that was substituted by our current magazine called uh, Nebula. And you can see here the changing technology available to societies to print their uh, magazines, just a, a, a very primitive form of duplication for the uh, first one in... Uh, uh, 1963, but then it improves and brings in colour, and then nowadays, the two on the uh, right, you can do quite professional looking uh, magazines at a, a very low cost in, in full colour for the members, and produce PDF files of them that you can have on the internet. The, the Society's journal, Nebula, I like to look back at some of the articles because they, they report on memorable events in the Society's life. For example, when we had uh, a link-up with uh, the Iranian uh, Astronomical Society in es Espahan and jointly observed the moon one evening and uh, managed from the angle of the, the crater Copernicus, I think it was, or it might have been Tycho, uh, from the angle uh, as seen from uh, Espahan at 8 p.m. and the angle as seen from Lees, we were able to triangulate the moon and work out the distance of the moon, collaborating with that Iranian society. Uh, sometimes the magazine covers special uh, achievements by members. So the one with a photograph uh, on there of a member, that's Melvin Taylor, who sadly is no longer with us, but that was when he was awarded the Merlin Medal of the uh, BAA uh, for his achievement in submitting over 80,000 variable star uh, measurements to the BAA. Or when we had the Transit of Venus special, where we had members all over the uh, world, in effect, observing 2004 uh, transit of Venus. They're quite nice reminders of those uh, uh, enjoyable times, these magazines. But some of the archives that we still preserve uh, are personal archives of individual members, such as Scriven Bolton, who some of you may have uh, heard of, who, who was uh, very short-lived. I think he died in his uh, mid-40s, but was an oil merchant in Leeds. Had his own uh, photographic reflector in a big observatory in uh, the Bramley part of Leeds, his, some of his archives and photographs and his paintings. He was quite a prominent uh, a painter of astronomical scenes uh, and was published in several national uh, journals uh, in that regard. But what I find most touching in those archives, and your societies might uh, have similar things, is the letters from members of the public. And in particular, after the, uh, in the wake of the Apollo uh, missions, the letters from young people, children actually, writing to the society, inspired to an interest in astronomy by the Apollo missions. So we have here, uh, working from the uh, top left, uh, I am enclosing one pound for my 1973 membership subscription. Sorry I did not give it on the 8th of November meeting because I did not have the money. Yours sincerely, Leslie Brownsword. Or at the uh, bottom there, uh, I would be pleased if you could send me particulars of your astronomy society. I would like to join as a junior member. I am 13 years old, or at the top on the uh, right. I'm very interested in astronomy and would like to be a member of your society. I'm 12 in August. Uh, please send uh, details. I wrote a few months ago. It must have got lost in the post. Uh, or another one. Uh, uh, I'm very interested in astronomy. I want to join the Leeds Astronomical Society. I have a three-inch refractor. Could you send me all the details? I'm 14 years, Jean Ludbrook. And then another very mystifying one. Dear sir, my son is nine years old and is very interested in astronomy. We have written to London, don't know who, uh, and they have passed your address on. <laughs> so uh, there was, it's, it just shows what the interest there is potentially out there to excite to an interest in uh, astronomy. <clears throat> But then the letters we had from uh, various speakers are uh, there. So one here from Patrick Moore on his inimitable typewriter saying uh, he's willing to speak at the society but no need for uh, uh, any expenses. A more practical one from Professor uh, Le uh, Bill Leatherbarrow saying he's willing to speak at the society. Don't need a fee but buy me a drink after the meeting. 
far more practical, but asking if an epidioscope would be available for his talk, which shows how technology has changed now. And uh, fin uh, finally, you, you might have all seen this sort of uh, uh, letter from an organisation purporting to be the Unidentified Flying Object Research Organisation. It's typed, so it looks more impressive, but the fact that it's on a lined exercise paper perhaps undermines that impression. And soon the, uh, the writer gives up on the, uh, the uh, typing and says, I appreciate your assistance in classifying the following sighting on Friday the 6th of June, 1969. And he says what direction it was in and how, what speed it was going at. Uh, any astronomer would be able to tell from the speed that that's moving around at the rate of rotation of the Earth. It's obviously a celestial object, not a, a, a flying saucer. Nowadays, you'll be able to immediately call up Stellarium and see that there between the uh, south and southeast is Mars, and that's what it uh, must have been at magnitude minus 2.15. Um, <clears throat> we've now, honouring that uh, request that uh, was made uh, in the first pages of the uh, scrapbook, we've now given all our archives, which is several box loads of material, to the West Yorkshire Archive Service uh, at their new state-of-the-art archive in uh, Morley. So we hope they'll be preserved for posterity there and allow various researchers to go and uh, look at uh, them. If you're interested further in this uh, history of Leeds Astronomical Society, there's a poster outside, which is this one here. Or if you're even, even, uh, even more interested, uh, this little booklet for £5, uh, says six there, but it's uh, £5. Is, I've got a few of the last copies available uh, for anybody if they want to purchase it. Or reviewed in the latest copy of uh, the journal of the BAA, this uh, biography of Charles Whitmill, who, as I say, was a former vice president of the BAA, uh, which is available for £15 if anybody is uh, interested. Uh, that was just a little glimpse at our uh, rich heritage, I think you'll agree. But I'll hand over to uh, Rod to, to say about uh, where it's been taken to in recent years. Thank you. Just find me talk. No, that's not it. That was the wrong one. Just talk among yourselves. How's that? That's a good start, that nice green screen. Um, <clears throat> yes, just very quickly, because um, I'm going to stop in 10 minutes, but uh, just a very quick idea of what we as a society do. And it has occurred to me that uh, it would be interesting to have a chat um, <clears throat> perhaps over tea or something, to see how it compares with your society, uh, see how uh, normal we are or how normal you are. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, our calendar of events. And um, we have two sorts of meetings. Um, the second Wednesday in the month, we call it a formal meeting where we invite an external speaker and we're not doing too bad, we've only got one month which we've not sorted out yet. And we, uh, we also have informal meetings as well. Uh, there's my, one of the notices uh, for one such thing. I think we're stuck on history, so uh, we uh, <laughs> keep digging up these historical photos. It looks like a 1950s university lecture somewhere. Um, another thing that we do regularly is an observing evening um, and we just so happen to have found a pub which is A, on a plateau, B, has not only a second car park but also a field um, and, and therefore an excellent horizon and uh, we, um, we think it's very civilised to be able to observe and then nip into the pub and, and warm up and in the past there has I must admit, being more warming up than observing, but uh, it's, it's a pleasant evening. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's not on a bus route. That's its only sort of drawback. Um, <clears throat> so we, we have um, um, little notices suggesting meeting uh, dates, and we wait to see whether the weather will um, be suitable or not. Um, we have state-of-the-art equipment, uh, 
And uh, no, that's what it looks like more normally. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's probably one of the few occasions where we get uh, younger people joining us because they will come with their parents and um, they'll, they'll join us. All our observing sessions are public. Um, <clears throat> David has mentioned the nebula, and this is another uh, regular event. I say regular, I'm afraid the virus has rather got in the way of that sort of thing. And we also have special events every now and then, and that might remind people of uh, previous meetings in this room when we have had things called Astro Meets. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we, 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 it was a lovely annual event, that uh, usually uh, in the late autumn, November time. Um, <clears throat> and Brad has mentioned that he has attended one of those, uh, very similar to today's meeting, really. Um, what else do we do? We, we um, take part in uh, local events. This is the uh, science fair in the Leeds City Museum. And this was just taken a few weeks ago because that's when it was. Uh, so we, we like to um, exhibit and uh, engage the public there. Uh, one of our members is um, using corruption on a young child to get her to answer a question. Um, and then if she gets it right, she gets a sweet. Um, <clears throat> this will be of interest, especially now, because just before the lockdown, uh, we had um, a um, relationship with a Russian um, who was involved in science education. And just before the lockdown, we had a, a really good event um, at the uh, Polish centre, actually. Um, so they were talking to each other at the time. And the, 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 the idea was to invite cosmonauts and that nearly happened in, the, uh, in a real meeting, but unfortunately, at the last minute, they, they couldn't come. And uh, it was reduced to something like a Zoom um, sort of uh, uh, presence from two cosmonauts uh, uh, in Russia. And it was still a very, very good thing to be able to see them, and they, they were answering questions uh, over a sort of Zoom environment. So. Uh, that's uh, how the world was a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> our members are quite, uh, well, getting quite, quite good nowadays at imaging, um, <clears throat> either on their own or during the, the observing sessions that we have. And uh, some of these pictures uh, are really quite exceptional. Um, <clears throat> that's hot off the press. That was the sun just a few days ago when the... Um, this very uh, active group of large sunspots has come round the bend and started to uh, aim at us. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe a chance of some aurora in the next week or two, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to end just by going back to that first slide, which was a... Um, a programme for 2022 formal meetings where we invite uh, external speakers. Uh, I, I forgot to say that on the, 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 the last um, uh, Wednesday of each month, we have something called an informal event uh, where we do it ourselves and we might have two or three or four presentations just done by the members. Um, <clears throat> and incidentally, uh, I ought to mention that we do other little incidental things. Uh, you might have seen that um, in uh, Dave's slides. That shows a, a trip we had just before the lockdown going to Joddle Bank, and there's a nice Joddle Bank picture. Uh, another thing that we do, I don't know whether you can see that, I don't know whether you'd like to meet one of those on a dark night, but that's supposed to be a beaver, and we often go to scouts and beavers and cubs groups and... Uh, or we used to <laughs> before the virus and uh, that's the sort of thing that we get for our troubles so uh, that, that's very rewarding and that's the other occasion apart from observing sessions when we, we tend to see uh, the younger end of the population but uh, just coming back to this I, 
I'm just highlighting our, our um, last two speakers just to thank them. And if you are in this category of person whereby you are a scientist spreading the good news of astronomy, um, you sort of devoting your time and your energy um, and, and a lot of preparation, no doubt, before any event and any talk. Just a big thank you, because it's this sort of thing that keeps our amateur societies going. And as you can see, the one speaker's from Southampton, another's from Edinburgh. And um, it keeps us also abreast of what's currently happening in the world of research and it's a very very stimulating thing for us amateurs who don't have access to all the uh, current um, <coughs> research that's going on so uh, thanks very much to all those people who uh, who do um, devote their time to giving people like us a talk okay thanks very much Who, uh, thank you very much to Rod and Dave and uh, the other members of Leeds Astronomical Society for uh, putting up their display outside and uh, for generally facilitating this meeting today. Go, go.